back out here in the Montana garage trying to get some shit taken care of. Uh, last I left off, I was working on the 55 over here, doing some welding, but I ran into a bit of a snag with my welding machine. Let's go take a peek at it. So my welding machine is a Lincoln Power Meg 210 MP. Um, I've had it for four or five years, I think now. Probably, well, the warranty's three years, so I know it's longer than that, unfortunately. Um, pretty happy with it. The issue I'm having, I don't know if anybody else has ever ran into this. This is the wire drive, I guess. And you have this little guy goes on there, and that kind of keeps everything sandwiched together, you know, so as the wire feeds into the the torch there. Um, and this is where you get your birds nesting. And that's the one issue I've had with this thing is I seem like I get kind of more birds nesting than I should, and I'm sure it's more my fault as far as settings and all that stuff. But anyhow, uh, I think kind of because of that, like you get a little bird's nest in here. This is screwed on here. And it's just these little aluminum threads. And uh, even taking it off, you would notice that the threads were kind of starting to, you know, you'd have a hard time turning them almost like it's cross-threaded, but it's not. So this one started kind of going bad, and I could hardly screw it in and out. So I tried to put a little tap in there. Well, and I just broke it off. So then the front one still worked, but then the other night when I, and then the bird's nesting got a little worse because I only had, you know, the one place to cure in it, but it still worked. Um, so then kind of the same kind of thing happened the other night when I was welding, I got a little bird's nesting and then that thread kind of started acting up and it just, they're just aluminum. It just broke it off. I had to use my pliers to try to get it out of there. So I got to replace this piece. Now the crappy thing is I did a little research and I talked to Lincoln and it sounds like I got to replace this whole wire drive assembly um, so it's what drives the wire obviously well, I gotta get that wire out of there but there's actually on the back side of this inside the case is the motor and that's all one piece you got to buy the whole piece it's like 230 bucks because I got two stripped out bolts or threads so that kind of sucks but I'm going to try to take it apart today. Hopefully I don't destroy something and make it worse, but I'm going to take it apart and I'm sure there's a reason for this design, but I'm kind of hoping I can come from the backside with some sort of a bolt coming through there or something I can do to make it work instead of having to buy a whole new freaking motor assembly just because those uh, thread areas broke out. So we'll see what happens. All right, so I got the welding machine kind of blown apart a little bit. So there's where the piece was that is broken. Here is the broken piece. So you can see these little studs here are what's broken. This one's not broken off, but the bolt broke inside of it, and then that one broke off when I was trying to tap it out before. Uh, so this... This piece, according to my little owner's manual here, is called a cover, and it has a part number. And then this is the rest of it, which is the wire drive assembly with the motor and everything. And when I spoke to Lincoln the other day, they said I couldn't buy just the cover. And once I took it apart and I found the part number for this, I did some Googling, and the only places I can find it, one place says out of stock and one place says obsolete, no replacement. So... I'm guessing what Lincoln told me is probably correct. They don't make this part anymore for some reason, or they don't want you to have to buy a $10, $20 cover when they can make you buy the $200 assembly. So I guess next step for me is I'm going to go to my local Lincoln supplier and see if they can help a guy out, see what's next. All right, so my local Lincoln guy told me the same thing. They, for some reason, quit making this part. It all goes part of the wire drive. My only hope, I guess, is maybe this is a problem other people have had and they've adapted or redesigned the part so it's more durable. So I have to order this whole wire drive that has the motor and everything, and it's 228 bucks or something, they told me. Um, so I'm, I took this piece that's broken to a welding shop to see if they thought they could somehow maybe 
TIG some new towers on here. He didn't really have any ideas. He told me I'd be better off to just order the new part. I'm going to try to make this work. Um, so what happens is the that guy fits on there. The wire goes through there, and then this guy screws into that, and that's what's broken off. I can't screw that on. I'm going to get my little Dremel out and buzz this off flat. The... The guy didn't think he could weld anything on there because this piece has to fit so tight against it. I don't have a TIG welder, and I don't know how to TIG weld, and obviously the welder I do have doesn't weld aluminum, but it's broke anyways, so I can't do that. I am going to try, you don't have to wrench down on this stuff super hard, so I'm going to try to cut these off, drill these knurled knobs out of here, and then maybe just JB weld some studs that stick up. And with that drilled out, put that back on there and then just have, instead of these knurled knobs, I just have some studs sticking out of here that I could put a nut on. I don't, the only reason that that may not work, I guess, is just whether the JB weld will stick strong enough. But for 225 bucks or whatever they said it was going to be, I figure I can spend a half hour trying. So we'll see what happens. All right, so first step, I said goodbye to the two little knurled knobs, just a little bit of clamping around the vise and drilling away. Got rid of those, now I just gotta find a bolt that will fit through that hole pretty snugly and a nut that'll go on it and get it attached to the welder. All right, so here we are with our welder repair. I got the piece of the drive assembly. I Got the old Dremel tool out and buzzed off those little towers. And I found some carriage bolts that were the right size. I had to drill out the top piece a little bit. But I stuck that in there. I put hopefully just enough JB weld to hold them, but not to glue the bottom. There's those two pieces in there. They're both supposed to come off, but I probably got a little too much JB weld at the bottom one. Might be hard to get off, but it's good for 25 and 3.5 wire, and that's pretty much all I use anyways. So I guess we got to wait for a day and see if it works. All right, next morning, let's see how we did on the old welder repair. I stuck this metal plate on here for a little bit of weight, pushing down on those studs. So here's what we got going on. I got the studs sticking up. Nuts. Well, studs not turning when I try to turn the nut, that's a good thing. Hopefully I got them straight enough that this will come off of here fairly easy. It wants to move anyways. Right there, off she goes. Said my biggest concern just is that those uh, studs won't be held on there good enough. Now, also, to get enough JB weld to hold those, I probably had some squeeze out, and that may make this piece hard to remove. But it's good from 025 to 035 wire, and I've that's all I've ever used so far. So uh, I don't think I'm going to worry about trying to press it off there or pry it off there and breaking them. So. Um, Still hasn't quite been 24 hours and it's a little cool, so I know these probably may, aren't totally set, but I'm going to go put this back in the welder. I just wanted to make sure that this would come off of there. Put it back together and then later today we'll wrench down on our little bit. Uh, cause I only got to make these things hand tight or so, so hopefully it'll work. All right, got it all snapped back into place. So far so good. Just got to tighten up some bolts and put the wire back through there all right so the old welder's all loaded up with wire and set to kill ready to roll again um so these are the studs that i jb welded on so we'll see how long they last i just kind of have them finger tight I, that's really all the tighter they need to be but we'll see how much uh you know if i get a ton of birds nesting if it, it's not going to work that great but so far Looks like I got her back in order. 
everybody, a couple days later, finally back out in the shop here. We have another beautiful spring day here in Montana. You know, well, you can see that a couple inches of white stuff coming down, snowing pretty decently right now, April 11th, I think. Anyways, a good day to be in the shop, I guess. So back out today, finally getting a chance to see if my little welder repair works. So let's check it out. All right, so we got the welder all set up here. And we're back over working on the 55 where I left off when the welder died on me. So I'm just welding these braces in. And look at there. Well, bam, she's making welds. Nothing real fancy, you know, I just did a bunch of, or a few spot welds, uh, but six or eight welds or so, and uh, no issues. The wire's feeding just fine. No birds nesting. So my little repair here where I replaced these couple little, uh, well, there were some threads in there, and I replaced them with some studs and some nuts. So, you know, a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of time, saved me 225 bucks. So that's never a bad thing. Let's hope that uh, the repair lasts and it keeps on welding away. So far, so good.